Ave homines sapientes. My name is Legion, for we are many. Well, actually, pardon my French, but murder law. No, we are, we are not many. We are one. We are me. I am it. I may seem to be many, and I have been given many names over the years. Abaddon, Chort, Old Nick, Yen Lo Wang, Angel of Light, Loki, Mr. Scratch. I, I have a fondness for that. Beherit, the adversary, Iblis, Lucifer, son of the morning, Napoleon, and on, and on, and on. You will probably know me as Satan from the Egyptian set, in which manifestation I was not regarded as being anything like as black as I have subsequently been painted. You may also know me here in Scotland, though I've never understood why, as the wee man. Speaking of which, there is also this nonsense about my son, my theoretical son, the Antichrist, which is sometimes also me. Simply not fair. No one ever called that sandal-shod messiah the anti-Satan, yet it says in the book, in that book, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hence, of course, that little altercation in the wilderness. But if God supposedly created me too, as an essential part of his plan to test people's faith, hmm, it can all be very confusing. As I was saying, in spite of all these names, I am not many, I am one and indivisible. However, I am omniscient, omnipotent and omnipresent, unlike you know who, your witless, powerless, imaginary friend. That's right, he doesn't exist. Oh yes, he used to a long time ago. You willed him into being. But even then, he wasn't really up to much. A bit dim, if you ask me. Thomas Hardy, a much better poet than novelist, I hope you'll agree, was on to something when he wrote, uh, Has some vast imbecility, mighty to build and blend, but impotent to tend, framed us in jest, that's you, and left us now to hazardry? Exempla Gratia. The nonsense about free will simply doesn't stand up to close examination. I don't really have time to go into it just now, but here's a thought. If um, YHWH did make you in his likeness, why did he not make you free, but not free to go wrong? as he himself is supposed to be. Hmm? He was really quite unpleasant, shocking temper, and cruel, if not downright, well, evil. All that damning and smiting and plaguing. Made a right old botch of this, of course. Faulty conception. And as for you, Talk about badly designed. But by the look of you, you will mostly have discovered that for yourselves by now. At any rate, the eternal simpleton is dead as a doornail, and no to begin with about it. Gone. One of your scribblers realised that quite some time ago, and begins with an N. Oh, Frederick, somebody else. Mad German. No, but not so mad. He knew. It's really only been me 
for a very considerable time. I'm surprised you've been so slow to realise. Just look at the world around you. In balance, is there any evidence of a smiling, beneficent deity that loves you all? If you look outside your own cosy, smug, pampered, uh, comfort zones, as I understand they're called, you'll see very quickly that there's far more misery being suffered than happiness being enjoyed. And then I see everything that I have made. And behold, it is very good. Lots of marvellous mayhem and barbarity at the moment. In fact, to be frank, it's almost become too easy. Even my line of work can slide into tedium at times. And there are times when I feel, as your man in Stratford said, that I have supped full with horrors, or at least supped full with the horrors of what you idiotically persist in referring to as the real world. You'll find out eventually. Too late, but you will find out. At any rate, this is just such a time, and I need respite from your childish bestial perpetuum mobile of mutual humiliation, degradation and slaughter. You sicken even me sometimes. Admirable, really. Luckily, when I'm in one of these moods, there is one other thing you are particularly good at, and that is telling tales. Not lies, though you're pretty skillful there too. No, poems, stories, songs. And especially tales about or involving me and my mischief-making. You write so much better about evil than you do about good, and with far more relish. Another clue to the state of play. I am fascinated by the fact that you are fascinated by me. Much more so than by YHWH. So... When I've had enough of real horrors, the messy ones, I turn to fictional ones, cleanly contained in black and white. Even my satanic majesty sometimes likes to vicariously save evil at work. Also, I do have my admittedly infrequent benign moods, relatively. This is one such. Enjoy it while you may. That being the case, I would like to leave your murderous world to its own devices for an hour or so, and beguile the time, if I may, by telling you some of my favourite human tales of devilment. And what better hour to beguile than this? The devil's hour. The hour of sadness, death, and suicide. Perfect. One of you will most likely not leave this gathering of your own volition. <laughs>